Yeah, no, I don't, I re it, it really doesn't matter to me who I speak to. Ich war in Mexiko last night, ja? Ich, 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 ich. Yes. Uh, no, Mamel, I'm inside, so I can't, I, I, I've got no idea who's close. Okay, cool. Hello. I'd appreciate one.
Hello? Amanda? Uh, comrades, secretaries of provinces, secretaries of provinces who are also charged with the affairs of all delegations, please make sure your delegates are together and are in the hall so that the conference can start. All buses have arrived but we would like all the secretaries to finalize issues relating to their delegations and make sure that delegates are together, delegates are in the hall. Welcome back to NASRAC, uh, where we uh, finally, uh, things are about to get underway. A little bit earlier on, we saw uh, President Jacob Zuma arriving. Uh, we saw him having a, a very uh, long conversation there with his deputy, uh, uh, pres uh, Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa. Let me say that rather. I'm joined uh, by uh, my colleague Criselda Lewis uh, in studio. Uh, Criselda, we here. It's uh, it's about to get underway. Quite a resounding welcome. A very good morning to you once again. A quite a resounding welcome for President uh, Jacob Zuma as he made his way into the Expo Center here at Nazareth South of Johannesburg. These are live visuals from inside uh, that uh, Expo Center there. Quite uh, embracing, I saw there, of the party veteran as well, Winnie Matigizela Mandela uh, of uh, President Jacob Zuma as well, as he made his way inside the Expo Center. She's been one of those who's been critical of uh, the African National Congress and the goings on of late within the party, which it's bound uh, to, 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 to come to the fore in this policy conference. Look, I think, I think what, what was happening is that the two of them, or at least the leadership coming in, was to reinforce what has been spoken about in this week, which was unity. Mm -hmm. Unity. We need to show unity. We need to show that as the ANC, we are united going into this conference. So when I'm mean, looking at those visuals, I think they're just, you know, that public reinforcing of, look, guys, we are here, we are together. Yes, sure, we may differ on, 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 on issues X and Y, but in general, we are, we're together, we're united. And I, th I, th I think the conference hall has filled up quite nicely. Absolutely. Uh, different provinces, of course, mm. carrying uh, the different placards uh, from the Eastern Cape, from Gauteng as well. And, you know, the sense of uh, unity uh, that we've been seeing uh, here at uh, the Expo Center this morning uh, really tries to, I guess, mask what we all know is in the public domain with regard to the African National Congress and perhaps uh, some of the pressing issues which would need to be discussed over the next two days, in particular the two days that have been set aside for organizational renewal. Let's just take a listen to some of the songs that are being sung there, but uh, quite a lot of our President Jacob Zuma, and uh, I guess the expectation is that you'll also hear some songs uh, on uh, the Deputy President as well, if you recall, of course, at some of uh, the provincial uh, uh, conferences that we saw in the run-up to this national one. You had a lot of that sentiment there, Lucanio, where you had uh, pro-President uh, Jacob Zuma songs that were sung, as well as uh, the uh, Deputy President, Cyril Ramaphosa. Let's just take a listen to what exactly is taking place inside there. must go and fetch to the left of myself in the hall all the listening devices for their delegations. The secretaries must go to the back, to the left. There are listening devices for all of us 
that the secretaries must pick up before we start, because there'll be simultaneous translations. The secretaries will, of course, know who needs it. The secretaries will know whether you need it or not. Uh, Well, visuals there from inside the conference center where it seems, uh, well, the national chairperson, Bale Gambetta, has just announced that uh, the conference will officially get underway uh, in five minutes' time. Criselda, uh, just before the conference gets underway, this conference comes at a very uh, difficult time for uh, the ANC. It comes at a time when Parliament is uh, busy investigating at least four, five uh, members, key members of the Cabinet, uh, you know, for, for, for corruption-related matters. What do you think we're likely to get out of this conference that, that will kind of show us the way as to what will happen in, 20, in, in December? Certainly what will come to the fore here is that while this may be the policy conference, you know, in many of the analysis that we've been getting in the run-up to this policy conference is that uh, you will get a sense of um, exactly who might emerge at that elective conference. This is just a stone's throw away. And uh, to think that that might not be one of the things that these delegates are here to press forward on would certainly be naive to think so. Um, you would see likely with the kinds of policies that are being pushed forward exactly who is supporting who. Many analysts have gone as, as far as saying you would see, for example, for those who are supporting uh, uh, Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa, many of the issues will speak to state capture, will speak to the relationship that the Guptas have uh, with uh, key prominent figures within the South African uh, government and also Corruption is one of the issues that will really be highlighted. And on the other hand, uh, what they're saying is that when you see the delegates who are supporting Dr. Nkosaza Nazamini Zuma, you'd get quite a lot of the policies that are speaking to radical economic transformation as well as uh, quality education. Those are some of the things that have come to the fore uh, since uh, the run-up to this policy conference. So this will set the bar for who is likely to emerge into December by the means of the policies that come out of this ANC a policy conference. So uh, it would be quite naive to think that uh, this doesn't set the tone for what is likely to happen in December. Also, I, I would imagine that these policies, I mean, as we were discussing earlier on, will find the, the you know, will find voice in the manifesto, will then should the ANC win in 2019, will then find its voice as government policies, those policies that will... Yes, corruption is, is, a, key, is a key issue that will be discussed here. Uh, issues of leadership will be discussed here. But hopefully the ANC doesn't focus only on, 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 you know, on, on corruption and all of this and then let other issues such as education, such as the economy, such as uh, land, for instance, which has been quite a key issue. They, hopefully those issues will also get quite an airing here. It will be quite dangerous uh, for the ANC to emerge from this conference without addressing some of those key issues. First of all, remember that these are the policies that the ANC needs to highlight, which will take the country and the economy forward. So judging already from what has been said in the run-up to this policy conference, yes, there are many pressing issues relating to state capture, uh, the Gupta emails, um, as well as uh, corruption. But to deal with the fundamental and pressing and relevant issues that are affecting service delivery, that are affecting ordinary South Africans, and I think many of those certainly who have taken interest in this policy conference would want the restoration of that confidence to come from what policies the ANC will come out of through this conference that will affect them. Because uh, just to quote from what uh, the uh, ANC NEC member as well as spokesperson of the ANC was saying this morning, this conference doesn't belong to the African National Congress. It belongs to the people. So if you're going to talk about policies, there are not, these are not policies that affect ANC members. These are policies which will affect uh, the ordinary South Africans, including yourself uh, and I.
talking about that, the ANC has been in government for 23 years. What are the chances that from this policy conference we're likely to see uh, wholesale new policies? Um, it, it's been in government. It, 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 I was speaking a little bit earlier on to Professor Susan Boysen, and she pointed this out to say that the ANC does have opportunities within government to change policy. So what new can we expect to come from this, if at all? One of the major issues I think everyone is looking to is the issue of land. Uh, the ANC needs to come up with um, a, a policy or something that will speak to, uh, in particular, the issues relating to land. I think uh, many, uh, we see a lot of focus, not just with the African National Congress, with opposition parties as well, including the economic freedom fighters who've been steadfast on the issue of land. So um, that's one of the key issues that needs to be uh, addressed by the African National Congress. But amongst that, uh, certainly one would not hope, or would hope rather, that that all of that is not overshadowed by the shenanigans within the African National Congress. That so much focus is not put on the challenges that the African National Congress is facing, uh, issues relating to land, to education, uh, dealing with uh, South Africa's economy that's currently in a recession. How does the, if the ANC uh, plan to resuscitate the economy from the current crisis that it finds itself in? But uh, let's not deprive you of uh, what's taking place inside uh, that uh, expo center where those thousands of delegates uh, have uh, converged there. The program is about to get underway any moment now. The ANC national chair, Bale Gambete, calling for a, water, a bit of the order there and perhaps um, will um, begin the program very soon and what the rules will be yeah. uh, of the house. We're expecting her to lay those out very shortly. We will totally have to adjust the program in keeping with the fact that we have lost a lot of time. We will quickly ask that Amakawe Choir must lead us in the national anthem. We would like to ask everybody, in terms of our courtesy and national protocols, just to stand and stand to order for the national anthem.
upon Reverend Mehana and his team for the interfaith prayers. We now come to the moment of solemn prayers. May I now request the conference to give this moment the dignity it deserves. As we begin this conference, we'll take a mental flight to the 8th of January, 1912. 
when then Chief Chaplain of the ANC, Reverend Dr. Ijem Koboli, was leading the prayers as he sang Diosoga's song. And as we sing this song that opened and started this movement, we will all rise and sing together. Lizale sitting la ko ti kon ko si nya ni so so pinta ka so wele ma se su se o si be seated. Namah Shivaya Varga Nathan Tavarga Ulegala Munando Dangari Avan Nila Mulavi and Yer Mani Vendian Alegal Sodi and Number Latiladuvan Malashilambari Vasti Vananguvam Amaye Napa, Wopila, Manie, Namashiva. Embodiments of love and gracious light. Almighty God, we thank you for all the resources that you have blessed us with. We thank you for this beautiful day that we are all alive, fit, well, and healthy, that we gathered here in good faith. Almighty God, bless us with the resources that we will make rational decisions, and this day will be responsible for all our action. And Almighty God, we'll respond positively to all situations, and we thank you for all the resources that you have blessed us with. Our duty today is to give unconditional love to every single one, that all mankind can live in peace, harmony, and unity. And only through unity will we succeed. The changes that we want is not external, it is internal. It's with you. The change you want to see, we have to make. So, Almighty God, grant us the power and strength to see love in everyone, because there's only one religion, the religion of love, only one cause, the cause of humanity. Almighty God, we thank you for this beautiful day and bring peace, love, and unity to all of us. Thank you. May God bless you.
Nia being a leleka menelga chesu, Sisa zotandaza, Nitala se vale amesho, sitandaze. Baba we tu oingwele, non we se wenko se tu chesu crestu, Sila passing umbuto, sison de la gue, Moya oingwele, uteo umasaka indu, sing agme miwena, sakela eze. Yinga ago manjek se nisi agme man kulungulwe tu. Unezwi owali shongo chesu uma ezowela nabafundi bake bese mkunjini guvuga izu inti zweni ya muguti ya ikona ni minye imikumbi emnyane moya wengwele ipaga atolo anje umkumbo no chesu wathaseleka silapa this morning moya wengwele to awake you to storm the to calm the storm Esinge ne para tem kunjini. Moya wengo elesia kulega na intanga no ye tu ga kongolos. Simema we na kulungulu we tu. Ugu tu mkumbi esparati wawo. Uya shaselo imkumbi mingane. Godwa umasinga vusi we na utuli sele mi moya ekona. Moya wengo elesinge finyelele la pasi ya kona. Simbonga we na kulungulu we tu. Uguti this morning sizo vusa we na. Uguti tulisa umoya. Uguza amaza anga ukwinye umkumbi. Eka meni na seka zinilga chesu. Sia bonga moingwele. Amen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirati hasanata wa kina azab al-nar. O praises you to God, Lord of all the universe, the compassionate, the most merciful master of the day of judgment, Guide us on the straight path, the path of those whom thou hast favored, and not the path of those who earn thy wrath, not of the, and nor of those who go astray. O Lord, bless us to fulfill all our responsibilities to the, to the best of our capabilities. And O Lord, forgive us for our sins and perfect our light. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we submit to your authority. We submit to your lordship. We submit to your kingship. We bring before you the fifth national policy conference of the African National Congress. We have come from the north, the south, the east, and the west, from all corners of South Africa, to represent your people. We have gathered together and converged on this place to craft, to write the vision for the people of South Africa. Habakkuk chapter two verse two says, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that they may who read it may run with it says, though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come to pass. Lord, I pray, let it come. Let it come for your children. Let it come for the young and the vulnerable women. Let it come for the people of this nation, our beautiful South Africa. I pray God restore our value systems again. Restore the health of our movement. Lord, let us realize as we bow before your presence, every delegate that is here, the awesome, great responsibility upon our shoulders to make the right decisions so that, Father God, you can turn South Africa around. Let the policies, Father God, emancipate our people. Break the yoke of poverty. Break the yoke of unemployment. Break the yoke of inequality from the necks of your people. I ask you humbly, delegates, let us lift up our hands before God today in this place. As I bless this conference, I bless in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends, for having us, for having me. I'd like to say how it is not for granted 
and, and how unique it is for this country, for us to be able to be here representatives of different religious group standing for the tolerance and the religious tolerance and love in this country. I want to tell you, as somebody who grew up in the Middle East, how it is not for granted. And I'm honored to be here with you. I want to tell you that as a minority within a minority within the Jewish community, as a progressive Jew, here in South Africa, we have wider religious tolerance and wider religious freedom than in my country, in Israel. It is a source of strength and pride to South Africa, as much as it's a source of shame and distress for all Jews. I'd like to read from our progressive prayer book, the Mishkan Fila Gates, and <clears throat> Well of Pray. Pray for community leadership. We read it in our meetings, in our meetings of our management committees and committees and so on. We say the following, eternal God, let us feel your presence when we deal with the mundane matters. May the aims we set ourselves and the means we choose to implement them be in accord with your will. Make us conscious of our responsibilities as leaders of this community by the example we set and the policies we adopt. May we help our members to understand our heritage and to walk for the welfare of society. Grant us, O oh Lord, the wisdom to build on past achievement, the humility to learn from past mistakes and the courage to think new thoughts and to consider new ideas. May we listen to each other with respect judge each other with loving kindness, and may our controversies be only for the sake of heaven. Guide us with your counsel and establish the work of our hands. Amen, so be it. Amen, so be it. <coughs> Amen. And now for all these prayers that have been given to you, O Lord, reignite in the hearts and minds of all of us who are in this conference. The theme of this conference that calls on us to unite in the name of Father Tambo. Unity, we know, Lord, is not a commodity. As your son Jesus said, I am one with my Father. Let the delegates of this conference be one with each other. Let them be one with you. Sharpen the minds of each and everyone who will participate in these few days. But as you do that, make them to be mindful of the foundations of this movement. Let us not go astray from the foundations that have been left by our forebearers. Yenzoba singa singa wili zeti. Umle manjela esa unne kwango ba uno mama bitu. Unite us in your love. If there's on, even one delegate Invite. that wants to get out of this unity, broaden the circle. Make the circle bigger. For those who are in here and for those who are not here, who are members of this movement. Welcome to you. If you're joining us on SABC2 at this time, we're broadcasting to you live from the Nazarek Center, where, of course, the ANC is busy with its fifth national policy conference. You join us just in time as the delegates are busy finishing the interfaith service. And then in a few minutes, we do expect President Jacob Zuma to take to the podium to give the opening address of the conference. But while we wait for the president, I am joined in studio by Professor who's going to be with us for the rest of the week as we bring you a live coverage from Nazareth. Prof, if I can bring you in here. Yes, uh, firstly, yes, yes. good morning. 
Good morning. Good morning. Delighted Thank to be here. Thank you very much. It's, uh, things are uh, finally it's about to get team. underway. Mm. Prof, uh, if we can interface. talk very briefly uh, as we Minister. wait for the president, how crucial is the policy Reverend. conference in uh, uh, for, for the ANC? Because in the way that I see it, this is the foundation yeah. upon which the next administration then builds uh, uh, the house. This is not about just policy, but it's, it's, it's policy that will guide the NEC, or rather the N ANC National Which Conference. What kind of policies, what kind of issues should they prioritize? What kind of leadership are they looking for? Because you have two twin problems in the ANC, really. is leadership uh, crisis. There's a, a lack of credibility for the leadership. At the same time, our economy is not doing well. So serious decisions must be taken. And those decisions must be taken, not only taken, but be implemented by people with integrity. See, it was, it was quite useful for the Reverend to invoke Tio Soka's hymn to remind the ANC of its own roots, yeah. that the ANC is not about the seizure of power, but it's about ethical orientation. Uh, the founders of the ANC have always dedicated themselves to public service. They put the people first. They didn't put their interests first. Uh, he went on to say that they should, they should make sure that they don't deviate from that. They remember their own ancestry. <laughs> All right. I think, I think that's a very good uh, <laughs> place to lead. But uh, let's uh, listen in now where uh, the chairperson, Male Gambetta, is at the podium. As we start with the welcoming remarks, comrades, I welcome all the delegates from all branches coming from all the communities all over South Africa. We welcome our guests. We welcome people from fraternal organizations from inside and outside South Africa. We welcome the people of the media who play a very important role, and that is that they will convey the proceedings that will be happening in this hall in the next few days so that South Africa has a clear view of what's happening. As we are gathered here, comrades, on the last day of the Youth Month, a month that reminds us of the role of young South Africans from 105 years ago. We remember Pig Slika Isaka Seme. We remember Charlotte Mateke, who were all at the founding conference. We salute them. We pay tribute to the young Oliver Reginald Tambo and the generation of his colleagues and comrades who left us the legacy of the Youth League and the Women's League. And they left us a lot of good lessons, comrades. And today, we are holding the fifth National Policy Conference in the year of Oliver Tambo where we remind ourselves that we have to deepen unity. In this conference, I call upon all of us, comrades, as we go in and out of here, as we go up and down the pre precincts of this uh, Nazarek venue of our conference, to remember that we must unite ourselves in how we conduct ourselves as cadres of the movement. Even in the songs that we sing, we must unite this organization. Comrades, we have heard our people. Bakulumi Labantu. Abantu Bakuluma Ngugustanda. Bakuluma nange ntukutelo, kotwa sibezwile abantu ugutibati nigitina. In everything we do in this conference, we must remember the sounds of the voices of our people. We have heard our people and the work we do in this policy conference, the outcomes of this policy conference must be such that it shows that we are a listening organization, the African National Congress of Oliver Tambo. 
that leader who taught us how to love, to be strong, to be humble, while we are being steadfast in our convictions, in our belief in the values of the African National Congress. Comrades, I will now ask that we receive the message and the opening message from the President of the African National Congress, Comrade Jacob Kezeshegisa Zuma. Thank you. Two Matza Yaruna All Power All Power Siabong Rialebu. Thank you very much indeed, comrades. Comrade Chaperson, Comrade Balambete. Deputy President, Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa. National. <laughs> National officials of the ANC. Members of the National Executive Committee. Leadership of the leagues of the ANC, the ANC Women's League, the ANC Youth League, the ANC Veterans League, <clears throat> leadership of the SACP COSATU, and Sanko, leadership of MVM 
MKMVA. stalwarts of and veterans of our movement, leadership of all structures of the mass democratic movement, traditional leaders, religious leaders, and business leaders, esteemed delegates from all ANC structures, especially the branches, international guests, comrades and friends, fellow South Africans. We convey warm greetings to all of you at the fifth National Policy Conference of the African National Congress. Over the next few days, we shall scrutinize the health of the organization in pursuit of organizational renewal and also discuss our policy proposals for the country ahead of the national conference in December. Our discussions must be informed by unity, which is the rock upon which the ANC was founded. We were taught this by the founding leaders of the movement. In, in 1911, when he announced the founding conference of the ANC, Pixley Guy Zagasem made an appeal for unity, stating that, and I quote, the demon of racialism, the operations of the Corsa Fingo feud, the animosity that exists between the Zulus and the Tongas, between the Basutus and every other native, must be buried and forgotten. It is shared among us sufficient blood. We are one people. These divisions, these jealousies, are the cause of all our wars and of all our backwardness and ignorance today. Close quote. Unity must be the thread that keeps this movement and our country together. Comrades and compatriots, the policy conference takes place during a difficult period economically in our country. The economy has entered into a technical recession. At the time of the budget in February, the economy was expected to grow at a low 1.3% in 2017. Given the current difficulties, even this low growth rate may now not be achieved. Our deliberations in this conference on the economy will need to look at what needs to be done to reignite growth over the next five years. 
this conference also takes place against the background of good progress that has been made in the country in the past 23 years in consolidating democracy and also in expanding access to a better life. We have, over the past two decades, developed a functional democracy, a democratic state with an executive, parliament, and judiciary that continue to, act, to execute their tasks informed by the Constitution serving the people of our country. The ANC affirms the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law, and we promote respect for our courts as final arbiters in disputes in society. Our constitutional democracy is also characterized by freedom of the media, which is enshrined in the Constitution. The ANC promotes the rights of journalists to work freely, safely, and without hindrance in our country. We also promote media independence from various interests, professionalism, as well as balanced and accurate reporting at all times. The ANC government has worked consistently to expand basic services that improve the quality of life to the poor and the working class. These include improved education and health care, housing for the poor, electricity, water, and infrastructure in areas that were neglected by the previous apartheid regimes. Social security has been expanded to reach 18 million people made up of vulnerable children, including orphans under the age of 18, senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and military veterans. This has contributed immensely to the alleviation of extreme poverty. This is, in addition to other social security covers like unemployment insurance, compensation, for injury or duty to, to for injury or duty and road accident cover these have also been made accessible to all our people the anc has increased access to economic opportunities for black people who were excluded before through various economic programs. The ANC prides itself on the growth of the black middle class through its policies and programs, including affirmative action and broad-based black economic empowerment. These need to be broadened to reach even more people in the next five years. The huge pension 
of basic services, the, sorry, the huge expansion of basic services has been achieved in spite of an economy that had been gutted by the apartheid system. Much more still needs to be done to reach more communities who are still waiting for services across the country. Conference will thus need to reflect on the pace and quality of the implementation of ANC programs and how this can be improved further to improve the lives of more people in our country as we reverse the legacy of apartheid colonialism. Comrades and compatriots, the ANC is a national liberation movement which now <clears throat> is in government. The movement has also faced several challenges over the past few years in the changing terrain of struggle which have impacted on the character of the organization. There has been a development of some very negative tendencies which have caused frustration and disillusionment amongst the membership and population at large. This policy conference is called upon to seriously look into these developments and emerge with recommendations that will help redirect the movement to its core business and its core mission and character. In doing so, we must draw on lessons from the past 100 years with regards to how the ANC has survived to become the oldest liberation movement in the continent. The ANC survived for a century because of, amongst others, the following traits. Its deep roots and connection with the people. Its vibrant internal democracy and collective leadership. Its readiness and willingness of its members to make sacrifices in pursuit of the cause of the people as a whole. Its readiness to acknowledge its weaknesses and decisively address them in order to escalate and accelerate the people's struggle. Its ability to adapt to changing conditions and rise to the occasion at critical moments. And its ability to uphold and build unity across sections of South Africans and progressive forces in the world in pursuit of the cause of humanity. Importantly, the ANC has succeeded in the past decades due to its capacity to mobilize other sectors such as 
business and faith-based community, non-governmental organizations, community organizations, the sports fraternity, students, traditional leaders, the international community, and the intelligentsia, amongst others, behind the program of transformation. We need to restore these traits as they have made the ANC a parliament of the people. It is not the first time that we discuss organizational renewal. We do it ahead of every national conference of our movement. However, at this conference, we must be solutions-based. We must not just end by diagnosing the problems and perhaps analyzing the problems, but we must develop solutions to those challenges. We will discuss the health of the organization, not just for the sake of it, but because our country needs a united, strong, focused, and cohesive ANC. The ANC belongs to the people of South Africa, and we must fix it so that it can continue improving the lives of our people. <clears throat> Ahead of the discussions, we need to remind ourselves of the objectives and the mission of the movement. The ANC is guided by the objectives of the National Democratic Revolution. As outlined in our strategy and tactics document, the main content of the National Democratic Revolution remains the liberation of Africans in particular and blacks in general from political and socioeconomic bondage. It means uplifting the quality of life of all South Africans, especially the poor, majority of whom are African and female. The National Democratic Revolution seeks to resolve the main and interrelated contradictions of national oppression based on race, class, especially the exploitation of black workers and the triple oppression of women. The ANC also remains committed to the objective of the National Democratic Revolution of uniting South Africans in building a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous South Africa. The non-racial character of the movement has indeed always been one of the defining features of the ANC. The ANC also remains a multi-class organization with a bias towards the working class and the poor. The ANC also seeks to retain and strengthen its position as a strategic center of power, the leader of the alliance, a disciplined force of the left, a mass movement, and an internationalist movement with an anti-imperialist outlook. Importantly, 
our discussions should be geared towards restoring the core values and principles of our movement. These are unity, selflessness, sacrifice, collective leadership, humility, honesty, discipline, hard work, internal debates, constructive criticism and self-criticism, and mutual respect. This is the ANC that our people know and love. We know too that despite the challenges it faces currently, the ANC still represents the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of millions of our people. Our people want the ANC to resolve its difficulties and continue with its mission of transforming South Africa and building a better life for all. To restore and maintain its character the ANC needs to cleanse itself of the negative tendencies which have crept in over the years. These tendencies which have been outlined before include patronage, corruption, social distance, factionalism, abuse of power, and membership system anomalies, such as the reported manipulation of the membership data, gatekeeping, and bulk buying of membership. Factionalism is a cancer that must be rooted out of the ANC. It has caused splits from the ANC which has negatively affected us both quantitatively and qualitatively. Slate politics another manifestation of factionalism. <clears throat> has cost us many good and capable comrades in whom our movement has invested significantly. We also need to look at the issue of ill discipline in various forms including public utterances attacking the movement by ANC, <clears throat> by ANC leaders and members, instead of handling matters within the organization and finding constructive <clears throat> solutions. Some members and leaders of the ANC have become primary, primary conveyors of negative information about their own movement. <clears throat> the challenge for the country is that this <clears throat> irresponsible, perpetual negative mess messaging by our own people has a negative impact on the economy. We need to discuss how we can balance our valued trait of self-criticism with the need to protect the ANC and provide it with the space to resolve problems in a more 
organized manner. We also need to be able to differentiate between self-criticisms and the furtherance of certain interests and agendas. Comrades, our movement suffered a serious setback in the August 3rd, 2016. Local government elections and experienced a decline of about 8% of the national vote. Our discussions here will reflect on these elections for lessons to be drawn and solutions to be found. We lost control of some key metropolitan municipalities, including Johannesburg, Tswane, and Nelson Mandela Bay. In Eguruleni, we managed to form a coalition to retain control of the council. Opposition parties formed coalitions to wrest control from our party. Part of the focus on renewal is aimed at enabling the ANC to regain that lost ground. The good news is that this week we managed to win Mohale City back as the ANC. Yes. <laughs> and those who were listening, when I was answering questions in Parliament, they will remember that I warned DA that we are going to return our hold in many municipalities. <clears throat> Since the announcement of the election results, members and supporters of the ANC have, out of pain and genuine concern, been engaged in varying degrees in robust discussions about what has gone wrong with their beloved movement and how we lost the metros. The National Executive Committee meeting in the immediate aftermath of the announcement of the results attributed our loss of support to, per to perceptions in society that we are soft on corruption, we are self-serving, and that the ANC is arrogant. These are based on research findings we had undertaken before the elections, which proved to be correct. We also <clears throat> visit many parts of the country, and people tell us what the problems are. They do complain about ANC leaders and deployees who fail to make time to talk to them and listen to their problems. This does not apply to all deployees or government officials, but one dismissive and arrogant ANC leader or official 
implementing ANC policy is one too many. The ANC has also referred to social restlessness, which manifests itself through the increasing number of community protest actions and what, hap what appears to be a growing tendency for these to turn violent. However, we do not condone violent protests, as people can make their voices heard in a peaceful manner, protected by the Constitution. Let me repeat this. However, we do not condone violent protests as people can make their voices heard in a peaceful manner protected by the Constitution. That means there is no need for protests to become violent. In fact, the view of the ANC is that damage to state property in particular must be categorized as a serious offense punishable by a long-term sentence. <clears throat> However, we should take these protests seriously as part of the diagnosis of what has gone wrong. Why do people now communicate with us through protests? This conference must diagnose the real problems that led to the decline in electoral support and propose effective remedial actions. We must not be emotional in our discussions about what caused our electoral loss. We must be open-minded and use the facts before us, combined with our revolutionary theory as the framework for analysis and interpretation. Importantly, we must also be prepared to discuss the South African political economy as the overall context under which our electoral support has declined. In addition to the weak capacity of the state and internal organizational problems, the unfavorable global economic environment has put a strain on our own economic development and potential for job creation, which causes frustration. As stated by Amelka Cabral, once people want a better life. He said, and I quote, always bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas, for the things in one's head. They are fighting to win material benefits, to live better and in peace, to see their lives go forward and to guarantee the future of their children." Close quote. <laughs> Comrades, we must unite around promoting integrity 
and curbing possible abuse of power and corruption among ANC members. In this regard, it is critical for us to discuss the impact on the organization of the ANC being in government and our cadres having access to state power and resources. The access to state power and resources has led to perceptions and allegations that the ANC is a corrupt organization given allegations of wrongdoing in certain cases with regards to state tenders. Failure to respond adequately and timely to allegations and the length of time that it takes for investigations to be concluded cause immense damage to the image of government and the ANC. There is also talk in the country currently about the capture of the state or government in the main by business interests. We support the establishment of a judicial commission of inquiry to look into the matter. At a political level, this debate requires a thoroughgoing analysis of the South African political economy so that we can understand what is meant by the state capture. We need to know which business interests have sought to influence the ANC and its government over the years with what impact and what must be done to end the sad capture. Such discussion is important because the ANC, as the leader of the society, must be at the forefront of fighting corruption, both in the public and private sector. We have introduced important pieces of legislation and have created very powerful institutions, especially to deal with corruption. At the last conference in Mangaung in 2012, we established the Integrity Committee as an internal mechanism. This policy conference will have <clears throat> an occasion to review the efficacy of this measure based on the experience of the past five years or so. Comrades, we also need to assess if our problems lie with the manner in which ANC leadership is selected. The most significant contribution that the ANC has given to our country over many years is tried and tested leaders who inspire confidence and trust among the masses of our people. The ANC produced Oliver Tambo, Walter Sisulu, Helen Joseph, Yusuf Dadu, Lillian Goy, and many others. The leadership election processes must be democratic and free from manipulation and external influences. In this way, we can protect the movement from abuse. We must therefore ensure that leaders 
are selected in line with the requirements outlined in our blueprint through the eye of the needle. Political education also remains paramount for both new and existing members. Without schooling members in the traditions of the ANC, we cannot criticize them when they make mistakes. This is all important as we head towards our elective conference in December. Comrades, the renewal of the organization also relates to the functioning of our leagues and the other structures and also strengthening the tripartite alliance. The alliance was formed out of struggle and out of a shared vision as articulated in the Freedom Charter. It is based on the understanding that each alliance component enjoys political independence from the other. Our discussions about the renewal of the ANC must reflect on the relationship with the Alliance partners and how this can be strengthened so that it continues its role of advancing the goals of the National Democratic Revolution. The unity of the Alliance is sacrosanct and must be protected at all times. It must not be undermined by sectarian agendas and personal hatreds. <clears throat> Comrades and compatriots, organizational renewal discussions must also include the role of women in the ANC and society. <clears throat> and what else the ANC must do to advance the vision of a non-sexist society and gender equality? A lot of progress has already been made in advancing the status of women and the ANC Women's League has played a key role in this regard. We need, we need to reflect on what else needs to be done to promote gender equality. Comrades, there is clearly a need for a strong Veterans League and Umkonto Wesizwe Military Veterans Association in order to provide a platform for more veterans and stalwarts to participate in the work and life of the organization. Comrades, the South African population is becoming increasingly youthful. <clears throat> These young people have very little to know <clears throat> to know real experience of the brutality of apartheid. The ANC needs to adapt and become responsive to the needs of our, of our youth today. 
It must talk to their interests, from access to education, jobs, the need to reduce data costs, entrepreneurship, to general social issues of concern to them. One of the key issues affecting our youth is funding for higher education and jobs. The Freedom Charter emphasizes that, and I quote, education shall be free, compulsory, universal, and equal for all children. Higher education and technical training shall be opened to all by means of state allowances and scholarships awarded on the basis of merit." Close quote. The Constitution takes forward this promise, declaring that, and I quote, everyone has a right to a basic education, including adult basic education, and to further education, which the state, through reasonable measures, must make progressively available and accessible." Close quote. In 2007, the ANC Policy Conference resolved that, and I quote, free higher education for the poor up to undergraduate level must be progressively implemented and this was reiterated at the Mangaung conference or, or policy conference. The funds allocated to the National Students Financial Aid Scheme for loans and bursaries to students at public universities and technical and vocational education and training colleges have increased substantially from more than 2 billion rand in 2009 to more than 12 billion rand in 2017. This policy conference will provide for robust discussion of the <clears throat> possibilities for providing equality afforded, affordable higher education to as many South Africans as possible and free education for the poor. This policy conference must at an opportune time as we eagerly await the report of the Presidential Commission into the feasibility of free, <clears throat> of fee free higher education and training. The deadline for the Commission to complete its work is actually today. <clears throat> 30 June. 2017, and we await the report. Of course, we have heard from our friends who get things first than us. They have already made an indication that the report is complete. <clears throat> of course, we rely on them, not so. We rely. Agreed? <laughs> <clears throat> Comrades and friends, I would now like to reflect briefly on some of the policy imperatives before conference this week. We recall the instructive words of 
our president, O.R. Tambo, whose centenary we will be celebrating in October this year. He said, comrades, you might think it is very difficult to wage a liberation struggle. Wait until you are in power. I might be dead by then. At that stage, you will realize that it is actually more difficult to keep the power than to wage a liberation war. People will be expecting a lot of services from you. You will have to satisfy the various demands of the masses of our people." Unquote. Let me repeat it. I think it is absolutely important <clears throat> because OR, oh, one day, another leader, <clears throat> Moses Mabida, said in a lighter debate, OR oh, is another leader. He's one of the finest leaders that the ANC has produced. He sees things three years ahead of all of us. Now, he was seeing things many years before <clears throat> our liberation. Let me quote him again. Comrades, you might think it is very difficult to wage a liberation struggle. Wait until you are in power. I might be dead by then. At that stage, you will realize that it is actually more difficult to keep the power than to wage a liberation war. People will be expecting a lot of services from you. You will have to satisfy the various demands of the masses of our people." Close quote. What wise words came from our leader? <clears throat> I, would, I would like to <clears throat> say all of you will agree with this. During the struggle, you never had to discuss the problems within the ANC as you do, because you were fighting, we're still fighting. Today, you have to have two days before the conference to discuss the difficulties. And indeed, the protest by people out there is exactly what OR said, demanding things from all directions. He's reminding us as the ANC, as a contribution to this conference, remember, it will be more difficult then. So the difficulties we are faced with today were known by those who led us that they will come because freedom, as it is so wonderful, comes with its own challenges. Successes at times bring its own challenges. At times, as you become victorious, the problems begin bigger. As a fighting person in this country, you see a bridge, a beautiful bridge, you want to destroy it. And it is easy, you just put an explosive, it is down. And you feel hmm? You see an oil refinery, you burn it. But once you are in government, you have to construct more of the bridges, more of the oil refineries. That is the difference that you have. <clears throat> what this says, the more the difficulties, the organization must be more united. Because if we are not united when you are faced with new difficult difficulties, then you are in problem. Because 
the difficulties will be more difficult to resolve. This is a lesson to this conference from our beloved leader, <clears throat> Ubaba Utam. Indeed, the OR was so right. We have a duty to sharpen our policies and ensure their effective implementation in order to meet the needs of our people and push back poverty inequality, and unemployment. While all our programs are important, the economy remains our apex priority. Nitintas <laughs> Peler, Over the last seven years, the ANC placed the creation of decent jobs through inclusive growth as a key strategic outcome. We adopted the National Development Plan as a broad framework to achieve this and the other strategic outcomes. The National, Democrat, the National Development Plan and the nine-point plan to reignite growth remain relevant towards achieving radical economic transformation. However, some extraordinary measures are necessary to move the NDP forward faster. At the last national conference in Mangao, we resolved to embark on the second, more radical phase of transition to a national democratic society. We said that this phase would be characterized by more radical policies and decisive action in order to achieve socio-economic and, co and continue democratic transformation. Radical socio-economic transformation as defined by the ANC NEC in July, in, in January rather, this year refers to a fundamental change in the structure, system, institutions, and patterns of ownership and control of the economy in favor of all South Africans, especially the poor, the majority of whom are African and female. Its components include the creation of jobs, accelerating shared and inclusive growth, transforming the structure of production and the ownership of the means of production and enabling the talents and, pro and productive <clears throat> potential of our people to flourish. The instruments that government must use to advance radical socio-economic transformation have also been identified. These are the constitution, legislation, and regulations, licensing, broad, broad based black economic empowerment, and transformation um, charter, the national budget, and procurement state owned and uh, state-owned companies and development finance institutions as well as government programs. Conference will discuss a number of interventions needed to advance radical socio-economic transformation. Some of the measures must include accelerated land 
redistribution, land reform, and huge support for agriculture and agro-processing on a large scale. Land in particular remains one of the most contentious and emotive issues in our society. The pace of land restoration and redistribution remains a sore point for millions of our people who were shunted to a small portion, often of the lowest quality of land, and even denied the right to purchase land in areas that were reserved for a minority of citizens. We believe it is possible to find radical solutions to land hunger, working with the ambit of the law and the Constitution. We also need to discuss ways of sustaining commercial agriculture and to increase agricultural contribution to the gross domestic <clears throat> product. We need to pursue industrialization strategies instead of depending on export of natural resources or raw materials with declining commodity prices. We must increase investment into infrastructure projects, prioritize townships and rural areas, and provide generous <clears throat> subsidies to black industrialists and entrepreneurs to build new factories and businesses. We also need to consider the transformation and deracialization of the highly concentrated financial sector in the interest of vast majority of the country. The licensing of post bank is also important and to give it capacity so that it can distribute <clears throat> social grants. Again, you pin the letter man, the paragraph in man. The licensing of post bank is also important and to give it capacity so that it can distribute social grants. <clears throat> Government must drive local procurement and supplier development and ensure that black-owned companies benefit from government procurement. The mining license regime and charter must be utilized to facilitate BB, uh, triple B, double E, local procurement, the development of black industrialists and SMMEs. These are all programs that we must use to drive economic transformation, economic transformation. The state-owned enterprises are a strategic instrument for the developmental state, but as experience indicates, we have to get them to the right level of performance and governance 
for them to achieve their mission. The improvement of governance at these SOEs is of utmost importance. Challenges in SOEs such as the SABC, SAA, and ESCOM have been a subject of public debates and finding solutions is critical for the ANC. Building partnerships with business is also important for the country to achieve much needed growth. Government will need to <clears throat> be proactive or proactively engage all sectors of business to encourage their participation in industrial expansion economic growth, and job creation. Other key programs forming part of the radical socio-economic transformation program include national health insurance and the comprehensive social security. The transformation program also talks to the eradication of so social ills, including violence against women and children. The ANC government has made the killings of women a priority crime, and the police have been, and the police have been directed to treat such cases with seriousness and urgency. Also key is the need to eradicate the abuse of drugs and substance abuse, which are tearing communities apart from the Cape Flats to Umlazi, Soshanguve, or El Dorado Park. We reiterate the call for the ANC branches to establish streets and village committees to support the police in dealing with, the, with this problem. What Congress will be really, um, <clears throat> waste for is that in this uh, policy conference, which is longer than any other we have had, I don't think we'll ever have another one as long as this one, that because we are faced with challenges, let us not discuss generalities. Let us discuss in 2018, really quickly changing the face of our country for the better. <clears throat> In other words, my feeling is that you should help other delegates. They are not discussing solutions. Sorry, comrade. We problem. This is uh, those who will be chairing the commissions, etc. Because it is important to spend more time working on solutions. Because we have been diagnosing the problems all the time. We must now find solutions and work on the instruments to deal with solutions to implement. One of the things I think you should do is to have seriously <clears throat> a monitoring entity. I don't know, there are too many names now we use in these things. I'm calling it entity. That will follow the decisions that will be taken in uh, <clears throat> December. How, 
how they are being implemented. You want a decision in December because that, in, that entity needs to be capacitated, etc., etc. We might even reduce other structures in favor of this one to ensure that we are able to implement our decisions. The ANC government has also begun to take a visible and aggressive stance against crime generally in our communities and to ensure that criminal gangs are put behind bars where they belong. Our communities should not be made to coexist with criminals. All these programs and the others require the existence of a capable state. The public service must be professionalized and government will need to teach public servants the philosophy and ethics of the development state and also of caring for citizens and being respective and being responsive to their needs. Government must also develop capacity to communicate better with citizens. The capacity to monitor and evaluate government programs and planning ahead is also critical. Comrades, the delegates here come from the branches of the ANC. You know best the conditions in which the people live. You know better than anyone else if the most pressing need is for a clinic or a school. That is why branches determine the policy of the ANC. Amandla Asemasebe, but. Amandla Asemasebe, but anwa sebenzis. Ninelenba keta band kubei buena babu yaba zon niggas ama instructions. The funny thing, you are, this conference is your conference in the May. If you take decisions here as recommendations, it is in actual fact the branches that have taken the decisions. You take all the decisions. If you are to elect the leader of the organization, the president, there's no other forum that can elect a, a, a president except the conference of the branches. If you want to elect a mayor, a councillor, everyone, it is a representative from the branches. But once you elect those people, you then president. Then could she well, you know we have forgotten that you actually put these people here. They depend on you. You now think that you, <laughs> you depend on them. Amanda, Asema Seben, how do you translate that? Hmm? Even when people, you elect a president, some people who have no right come to tell you this president must go. They don't consult you. They are too lunch. People take your right, you just keep quiet. Because you are the only one who can hire and fire. Not so. Sin la lele tina ngopasis 
Sis Hamba Ganan, Stigzama Kandaganan, Sis Tati Kundaze, my Babu. <laughs> what we are here for is ultimately to find a common understanding on how best to address those needs in the shortest and the most satisfactory manner. That's an emphasis that a, this conference, perhaps more than any other policy conference, precisely because of the situation we find ourselves today, you need to spend more time finding solutions to problems, whether they are political or governmental or social. Comrades and friends, conference will also need to look at the balance of forces and the resistance to socioeconomic transformation that will continue to hinder the implementation of our policies and programs. Such resistance comes in different forms. The ANC will continue to experience resistance to its progressive policies relating to employment equity, broad-based black economic empowerment, labor market uh, regulation, and land reform. The use of the courts to oppose our policies and programs will also continue and is something we need to reflect on at this conference. I think the, the bigger question is why is in democracy that we have got to spend money, go to court for everything? Is that what we, we designed as our democracy? <clears throat> is that the democracy we want? Hmm? If you disagree with an opposition, that does not make the simple understanding of democracy work, that the majority prevail. <clears throat> then you go to where there is no majority, in court to finalize the debate. Because that's what is happening today in South Africa. You argue in parliament, and then <clears throat> the opposition is defeated. They say, OK, we are going to parliament, we are going to court. In other words, the debate in parliament these days ends up in courts. Is that the democracy we thought we were doing? I think these are matters we need to discuss very seriously as the African National Congress. Because this, in other words, is a counter to democracy. You can't do anything. People will vote for you in the majority because of the programs you present. But once your programs are there, you try to implement them. Some people take you to court. It is unconstitutional. Don't do it. So you, that, in a sense, undermines the simple logic of majority prevails or majority rule. I think that matter is serious for you to discuss. Is this that we wanted to? There are many things that we wanted to do, we can't do because there's now the decision of the court. The courts, I think, recently, I heard courts beginning to say, please don't bring your job here. Finish it in parliament. <laughs> At the same time, it should concern us that the ANC-led government should have to be directed by the court to implement its own policies better. Very funny. But it has happened. That also talks to us how we, we implement. But I can tell you, the reason that happened is because of the point I've just made, where in the, <clears throat> the opposition can argue with us 
because our policies are good. You can't uh, falter them. And therefore, that's why they remain with slogans and then courts. They, they collect more money to fight the democratic issues in court. I've never seen such a democracy. That's why I say, let us discuss it and say, is this what we can actually quickly change the quality of lives of our people by being in court all the time? We should improve our capacity to implement our programs without the courts having to direct us to do. In other words, we should also look at ourselves. Do let us do things right, precisely because we now know at a drop of a head we are in court. So let us limit the elements that will make us go to court. In Parliament, we have politics of politics of spectacles and grandstanding drama and manipulation in our parliament. Grandstanding, etc. But we all say we are here, we send by the people. You know, everybody, even those who just send themselves, they can say they were sent by the people. So easy to say it. We have to ask ourselves whether we have honed the skills to manage this and the growing attempts to draw a wedge between the executive and the parliamentary caucus of the governing party. Another form of resistance takes the form of traditional lobbying where vested economic interests seek to derail transformational policies through different forms of persuasion. We should also be alive to the dynamics globally and the changing balance of forces. All our positions in the global village must first and foremost serve the national interest. By definition, the National Democratic Revolution is an internationalist project. Our revolution is an, inter an integral part of the anti-colonial and anti-imperialist movement for a new world order. Africa is part of us as we are part of Africa, first and foremost. Our struggle is inextricably linked with the struggle against neo-colonialism and imperialism on our continent. Our pan-African and internationalist position informs our support for the struggles of the people of Western Sahara and Palestine for self-determination. It informs our solidarity with the people of Cuba and against the economic embargo on this revolutionary nation by the US and our demands for institutional reform of the United Nations. We remain steadfast in our demand for the representation of Africa among the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Comrades, we'll recall the ANC decision for the country to withdraw from the International Criminal Court and subsequent government action to effect this decision. 
the government has begun to rectify the procedural challenges that have arisen. We have also taken note of the latest reluctance of their member states to withdraw in block. The current government position is that the decision to withdraw was a principal matter and the principal still stands. As already indicated, the ANC is part of the global anti-imperialist movement. We are historically connected with the countries of the South, and therefore, South-South cooperation, such as BRICS, is primary for our movement. At the same time, we are historically connected with the countries of the North, with whom we have strong economic ties. Comrades, we also need to reflect on other developments in the global environment, such as the reinsurgence of neoconservatism. This manifests itself in the victory of center-right parties in elections in some of the advanced uh, societies. Other manifestations include the unilateralism on trade and diplomatic issues and a retreat to pro protectionist trade policies. We must reflect on all these positions in the next few days as we discuss our international relations policy. Comrade, as we begin this very important dialogue on organizational renewal, let us be reminded of the words of Isitwalande Ndwe, Walter Sisulu, who said, and I quote, it is a law of life that problems arise when conditions are there for their solution, unquote. The ANC is 105 years old because it has always been able to rise to the occasion to deal decisively with problems that threatened its very existence. When we say the ANC can self-correct, we mean that when the challenges are daunting, its cadres are able to go back to what brought them together in the first place. Let us find what brought us together and find solutions to the challenges facing the movement and our people. Let us not be defeated in our discussions. Solutions can be found and must be found to the challenges facing our movement. The ANC must, the ANC must and will emerge from this policy conference stronger. Concluding his political report to the 1991 National Conference, President Oliver Tambo made the following remarks. <clears throat> Let me before make the final, final <clears throat> words from OR say something because these branches have not met for a long time. You know that the reason why we have seven days 
it is because <clears throat> some comrades who call themselves the stalwart veterans <clears throat> went around the country organizing other comrades because they had some views and organized those comrades and later reported <clears throat> to headquarters that they've organized comrades at about 101. And these comrades have concerns that they want to discuss. But they did not say we want to discuss this with the leadership of the ANC. They said they want a consultative conference. They took a decision on their own outside the structures of the ANC and presented that. At first we thought it was very funny that so many comrades could sign a petition uh, in the manner in which they did. And, and they said they have actually went around canvassing the comrade who wrote the letter. He has views and is not coming with the views to headquarters to say, look, these are the problems I see. Takes the views and organize other comrades. We thought we should check with those comrades. We actually wrote individual letters to them. Are these your problems? I think only one or two or three wrote back, others did not. But others were disassociating themselves from that, that they don't even know how their names are there. In fact, one of them who was there, who's sick with the hospital now, sent me a message yesterday. He wants me to come to the hospital so that he can clarify that he's not party to that. We had a discussion in an attempt to meet their request, much as this was really done funny by people who <clears throat> profess to be knowing the ANC. But we said, fine, maybe comrades have got reasons. We had a discussion with them, and we ended up with a compromise decision that in the days that we normally have of the <clears throat> policy conference, we'll add two days, so that the first two days will then come with them. They would participate and discuss their concerns and the concerns of all of us. And later, of course, they were joined by uh, some comrades as well who are former MK who are calling themselves a council. And we had agreed that this will happen, but they decided, no, this is not what they want. They want their own. It's a very fun. It's like now a real organization operating, I'm sure they must be having an office or something. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Because well, they're very organized. They organize the media and con in fact communicate with us in the majority of cases through the media. Now I'm not sure whether it is true because I've been traveling a lot. I was told that um, they said to the SGO, the, they, they don't think the quality of the discussion here will be at the level. They need serious discussion. So these are the people who claim they have the values and the understanding of the ANC, but the branches that are the organization, they think, no, just riffraff. They want the discussion at a very high level. <laughs> Your president is wrong. We want him out. They don't come to you to say, you elected this fellow, and this fellow is messing up. We ask you to do what you did to remove him. They think they've got power, everything. In fact, one of them wrote to me, not one of them, one of the comrades who thought that you are not meeting these comrades wrote to me a letter. And in the letter, it was saying, in fact, these comrades are more important than us elected. We're just elected to do administration. They are the real leaders. I think it was in the letter that was written. 
I think you should know this because they have decided to have their own. I don't know what it means, but I will be <clears throat> really unfair if I don't say what I say to you. Because many of us have controlled ourselves not to respond to these comrades. Because we know them. Some of them are not as strong as they project themselves. <laughs> we know them. <clears throat> but, but because we are keeping to the discipline of the organization, we are not engaging them in public, and we will never engage them. <clears throat> I'm just talking here because these are the branches to know that this is what had happened. <clears throat> In fact, quite a number of them, when they talk to the media, they say there is no leadership in this country. Uh, and and, and they are very convinced. They are the leaders, people who are leading at the moment. <clears throat> they are not, uh, they are just administrators. But that's fine. Let me close with OR. I'm now closing. Absolutely. <clears throat> OR was one of the finest leaders. Cheers. <laughs> Things that he said go a long way. And I quote to OR, we did not tear ourselves apart because of lack of progress at times. We were always ready to accept our mistakes and to correct them. Above all, we succeeded to foster and defend the unity of the ANC and the unity of our people in general. Even in bleak moments, we were never in doubt regarding the winning of freedom. We have never been in doubt that the people's cause shall triumph. Unquote. Yes, we honor our forebears and our martyrs today and in their memory. Let us make this fifth national policy conference a success. Amanza! Away to Mata, Yaruna, Oliver Tambo, how bad go to Oliver Tambo, how la go to Oliver Oh, 
Amanda, comrades, can we just listen to announcements? Comrades, we'll continue singing after lunch. Sizokula, after lunch again, men, gang manager. A few announcements. This car is a red, a red Jeep. MPHJF789. This car is in the street and the person just left it on and left it there. Please go and attend to your car. E number plate and ate yasempumalang. 
Comrades, money. Comrades, comrades, whoever those people are, Slalelane. Uh, first of all, comrades, we would like to bring it to your attention that there was a fire in the office of the Premier of Houghton, which was caused by an electric fault. No one was hurt, no documents were lost, the fire was put out. This is a note from the Premier of Gauteng. We think because you will be getting these messages, you might think there's a crisis out there, and yet everything is under control. Uh, no documents were lost, uh, and no one was hurt. The second announcement is that a conference bag with an ID on the side pocket and a wallet inside, as well as a cell phone inside, must please be brought forward by whoever finds it. It was lost by the Eastern Cape delegation. I think this is the same. Comrades, this is the end of the open session. This is the end of the open session. This is the end of the Okay. Well, welcome back. Well, uh, just a few minutes ago, President Jacob Zuma uh, finished uh, his uh, prepared speech, uh, which essentially opened the fifth national policy conference of the ANC. He mentioned a few issues uh, that I mean that I'll just quickly like to recap on. I think one of uh, the strongest themes that came out of his speech was the issue of unity, uh, calling on the delegates to make sure that th they are united, that the ANC is united, and that whatever is, is, happens from here on out, both with regards to the party and as well uh, the, the, the policies that will come from here, speak of a united uh, ANC. The, other, the second thing that uh, uh, the president mentioned was the issue of solutions, that the delegates here, you know, it's not just enough to talk about uh, uh, the, the policies and to discuss the policies, but that those policies should be uh, uh, crucial in providing solutions to the problems currently facing the party. Uh, and then the president also spoke about the issue of having uh, the ANC having to go back to its core values, the values that have made sure that over the last hundred years, the ANC was able to survive, the ANC was able to adapt, the ANC is able to this year celebrate 105 years. I am joined, of course, uh, in studio uh, by Professor Mkabisin Lejana, who was listening uh, very attentively to what the president was saying, uh, uh, even left our studios to go inside the plenary hall to go and listen. So I'd like to bring him in here. Prof, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, Prof, uh, I touched very briefly on the issue of unity that came uh, from the president's speech. It, I think it was the overriding theme uh, of the president's speech. It was a very carefully crafted speech, very moderate. He avoided some of the divisive issues such as radical economic transformation. He talked about the necessity to transform the economy to deal with current problems, but within normal ANC language. Uh, he even said that everything that the ANC does has to be done guided by the constitution and legislation. So he was very aware not to create controversy around the economy, especially because we have this recession now. Uh, but at the same time, I think he couldn't help taking a dig, especially at the veterans. I think this is indicative of two things. Uh, he really wants ANC problems, especially issues of performance by leaders, to be handled exclusively by ANC branches. He even said that higher and higher. 
which shows some confidence on his part that he's fairly in control in that space, but is wary of bringing in outsiders who are not necessarily bound by ANC branch processes. I find it extremely odd that someone was talking of unity would launch such a severe attack against the veterans of the ANC, saying that some of them are not as strong as they project themselves to be, that they think they are better than the ANC. Isn't it quite strange? Because that wasn't part of his prepared text. So I would imagine that was, is something that he must be feeling quite strongly about. Feels quite strongly about it, but also it betrays the fact that he doesn't want to step down. Uh, right, that because these, these people are saying there's a lot of problems happening now and you are at the helm, you are the primary cause of those problems, so you, you must step down. So he doesn't like that kind of talk. Um, and, and one of the issues I thought he, should, he would have handled uh, quite strongly was the issue of the Integrity Commission. See, it's very strange to listen to President Zuma when he talks about corruption and state capture. Because all these things go back to him. Mission, the NGC in 2015 said that their recommendations should be binding. So whatever they say is final. And yet we know that that commission has a report about Jacob Zuma. And for some reason, its credibility is now being challenged. So, so you, this is going to be very tricky. Uh, because there's a lot of pretense to sincere inquiry and coming up with solutions. And at the same time, there's a sneaky attempt mm. to steer the discussion towards um, a conclusion that will not be as bold mm. as it is demanded of the ANC by the moment. So there's a lot of uh, duplicity of such. OK. Well, uh, Prof, we, we, we're running out of time, but sure. I'm sure we've got another two minutes or so. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the president's insistence that this conference must be solutions based. It must be solutions outcomes. Where do you think the ANC should look for those solutions? Well, the, he mentioned also something very critical, that uh, once you have solutions made, then you must have a monitoring process. Because that's really the failure of the ANC. Because, I mean, as I was saying, ELA NGC makes all sorts of recommendations. But it's now two years down the line. And some of those recommendations have not been implemented. Um, and also, solutions that uh, branch members are ultimately in charge, when in fact, some of them are given guidance. They are controlled. Hence the issue of members of members or members of leaders. They take a cue from their RECs, from their PECs. They don't themselves, as, as individual members, follow their own conscience. That is why the veterans were saying some of these branch delegates, they are part. The ANC knows that. There's bark buying of members, right? So they are not sincere. They are not authentic. They don't care about the ANC, but are getting their instructions elsewhere because they are paid to say what their handlers say they must say. All right. Prof, unfortunately, I mean, as much as I'd love to continue this uh, discussion, we are uh, unfortunately out of time. And uh, for this afternoon, at least, uh, that's it from us here at NASRAC. Uh, we will continue to bring you uh, news uh, and maybe even some programming uh, as, as uh, the afternoon unfolds on other SABC platforms. But uh, from now, for now, at least, uh, from me and the rest of the team here, it's uh, back to the studio. <laughs>